dedicated to the strength of the nation, now heard on 1,000 radio stations. Proudly, we hail. Yes, proudly, we hail, starring Ruth Warwick in The Angel of Clarksville, a United States Army and United States Air Force presentation. And here is your theater of stars host, the well-known Hollywood showman, C.P. McGregor. Thank you, thank you. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome again to Proudly We Hail, where each week you meet your favorite star in a story we're sure you'll like. Of all the actresses who made radio a stepping stone to motion pictures, none has achieved more dramatic success than our star, Ruth Warwick. Ruth is a distinguished alumnus of that very famous radio repertory company, the Orson Welles Mercury Theater. And we're delighted to welcome her back to the microphone in the starring role of Nellie Johnson in our tender and moving drama, The Angel of Clarksville. We raise the curtain for Act One in a moment. But first, a brief message from Wendell Niles. Guardians of the Peace. That's your regular Army and U.S. Air Force. But who are these guardians? They are the young men from your town and from towns, farms, and cities all over the United States. They are alert, ambitious young men. They are improving themselves by education and by training. They are following worthy careers in a worthy work, the work of keeping the peace. This is your regular Army and U.S. Air Force. Now, once again, our producer. And now the curtain rises on Act One of The Angel of Clarksville, starring Ruth Warwick as Nellie Johnson. <laughs> You may well know it from the Bible, Isaiah chapter 54. No weapon that is formed against thee will prosper. I'm sure no one demonstrated that great truth more eloquently than Nellie Johnson. Had you lived in Clarksville or thereabouts, you'd have heard of Nellie. She was the friend of everybody. I suppose I did have lots of friends, but, well, then, so did many others in Clarksville. Everything had been going along without much happening until that night. Fred came home so late. Fred's my husband. He worked at the bank. I was sewing when he came in. Is that you, Fred? Yes, Nellie. Where have you been? Uptown. But it's so late, Fred. I know it's late. You've been out so much at night. You don't have to hop at me. You don't have to yell at me every time I come into this house. I'm not yelling at you. It's getting so I hate to come home. You'd better get to bed. What kind of a home is this? You'll find clean pajamas in the dresser. Always somebody badgering. I'm sorry, Fred. Oh, Nell. Nell, I I guess I'm the one that does all the yelling. Please forgive me. Oh, it's late, dear. You're tired. What are you doing? Oh, I'm fixing up this dress. No. Why don't you go down and and get a new dress? (laughs) Have you seen our bills? Yes. Yes, I'm afraid I have. Oh, never mind. It was nice of you to think of it. Fred had always been like that, as long as I could remember. Even in the few short years ago that that seemed so long ago. Even in that wonderful time of dreams. Hey, Nellie! Yes? Wait a minute. Hello, Cookie. (laughs) Who are you being so familiar? I'm your favorite boyfriend, remember? I most certainly don't. (laughs) Nellie, where are you going? Why, to school, silly, of course. Not that you'd even know the way anymore. Nellie, it's too nice to go to school today. Oh, it is. Sure, come on. Take a walk with me. Mm, No. Ah, Nellie, what are you going to do inside that old school? Nothing. But with me, I'll pick you out a couple of dreams right out of the sky and make them come true. Well, I... You can't say no to me, Nellie. You know that. (laughs) Why, Nellie, someday when you and I get married, I'm going to say, what do you want more than anything else? And what did you say? Well, I don't know. I'll probably say I... I want you. No, no, that's taken for granted. What do you really want? A car? A chauffeur to drive it? Clothes? Clothes? Well, yes, I I would like a a pink organdy dress. Yes, a beautiful pink organdy dress. One dress? Why, listen, Nellie, I'll buy you a whole closet full of them. A closet? 
closet full of dresses. Dreams. That was years ago, and I never got that organdy dress. But I have what I want more than anything else in the world. That's Fred. Well, the next morning after I got Fred off to work, I had a visitor. She was Susan. That's the little girl who lives next door with her Uncle Bert. She was just tall enough to reach the doorknob to let herself in. Hello, Nellie. Hello, Susan. Well, I can't imagine what's on your mind. If you can't, I can't. Cookie. No. Yes. Oh, well, now before I open the cookie jar and give you some, you'll have to earn them. First, what's two and two? Four. Mm -hmm. Four and four? Eight. And eight and eight? I only want two cookies, Nellie. <laughs> All right, dear. But remember now, eight and eight is sixteen. Sixteen? Mm -hmm. Now, here are your cookies. Thank you. You know... Someday I'm going to come in here and give you the answer to 94,203 and 79 million. <laughs> you are? That's when I want the jackpot. <laughs> All right, Susan, dear. That ought to win the jackpot. You know, it's a shame, Nellie. What's a shame? Somebody as nice as you have to live with somebody. What do you mean, Susan? My Uncle Bert said it. He doesn't think much of your daddy. He says he's going to get into trouble. Susan, now that isn't nice to say about anyone. I wonder what your Uncle Bert meant. I don't know. Gee, these cookies are good. Why are you so good to all the children in the neighborhood? Because all children are angels, dear. Uh, you better scamper along. And tell your Uncle Bert I want to have a talk with him later on. Why is it that you fly on the high winds one minute and only to go into a tail? Is that the only way of life? I thought of Susan, how dear she is. And I thought of Fred and myself. This was long before Susan and Uncle Bert moved next door. I thought of Fred and me, that mad ride through the night, our baby. Well, what do you think of this bus? It's fine, but you're driving so fast. Fast? Are you kidding? Why, I haven't got this baby halfway to the floor. <laughs> Watch us go now. Fred, the doctor said to be careful. How's that acceleration? Fred, did you stop at the tavern? Hey, take it easy. Fred, look out. Look out there. Is that you, Fred? Yes, Nellie. Where am I, Fred? Where am I? You're in the hospital, Nellie. Oh. What did the doctor say? You're going to be all right. Yes, but... But... Oh, Fred. I wanted my baby. I wanted my baby. But then... I had another little angel, Susan. Not quite all my own, to be sure, but part mine. I spent the rest of the morning hanging out clothes. Susan and Uncle Bert came over early that afternoon, just as I was about to start over to his place. Nellie, what's wrong? Has that youngster been talking again? She most certainly has. And I wonder why you tell her such things. Well, what did Susan say? Well, she said that you felt sorry for me. Fred was heading for trouble. Oh, it's one, but I bought trouble trying to be a father to that girl. That little monkey has a pair of built-in earphones. I'm not interested in that. I want to know why you said that to her. Now, wait a minute, Nellie. I'm not getting mixed up in somebody else's business. You'd better tell me, Bert. I'm not one to pass along miserable information. That just happened to slip out. But I want to know. You're forcing my hand, Nellie. That I am. All right, Nellie. I'll get something off my chest which has been bothering me for some time. That's habit. I hate to see anyone as good as you heading for a lot of trouble. Get to the point, Bert. All right, I will. I was over to Chase City the other night. Yes? And there's a cafe over there with a gambling hall. Bad business. I happened to be there the other night. Well? Fred was there. Well, he's a grown man. 
Has the right to go where he pleases? But he was playing, Nellie, with the kind of stakes nobody in this town can afford. All right, Bert. Please, don't tell anyone else. I won't. Thank you. Fred, where are you going tonight? Into town. Why? I've got business, that's why. Fred, Bert saw you in that place. You've been gambling. All right, so I have. But why? Tell me why. Because I want a few things $60 a week at the bank won't buy. Because I want you to have some of the things that have been denied you. Well, you'll never make it that way. <laughs> I'm doing all right. Never. <laughs> Fred. Fred, remember. You used to say to me, I'll pick you out a couple of dreams right out of the sky and, and make them come true. Sure, I remember. When will you understand, Fred, that I have the only dream I ever really wanted? You. Oh, Nellie, Nellie, don't talk like that. You make me feel terrible. Fred, you always did get your way with me. But I'm asking you, please leave the gambling alone. Fred, what are you doing home at this time of day? Nellie, I'm in trouble. Fred? Serious trouble. Fred, what's happened? I've been gambling over at Chase City. Oh. I've drawn on the bank. Oh, not the bank. Oh, it's too late now. How much, Fred? How much? $2,000. $2,000? I've covered as well as I can, but I'm up to my neck. Oh, Fred, how could you? They have... declared a company order for tomorrow. They'll catch the shortage, sure. Oh, Fred, how could you? How could you do such a thing? It was for us, Nellie. For us? For us? Can you stand there as a man and blandly tell me it was for us? Oh, I'm sorry, Nellie. You're sorry. Don't you see this can mean prison for you? It's over and done with, Nellie. Over and done with. You're so right. Tell me, does anyone else know about this? Of course not. No one except you. All right. You get back to work. Yes, Nellie. Don't make a move. Don't let on anything has happened. We have until tomorrow. That's little enough time, and I need time to think. I hustled Fred off to the bank, but I scarcely had time to consider anything. And there was a knock on the back door. Excuse me, Nellie. Is everything all right? Oh, oh, yes. I'm sorry to bother you, but Susan is very sick to her stomach. I don't oh. know quite what to do. Oh, well, I think I know what's wrong. I I'll be right over. Well, Susan, are you feeling better? A little, Nellie. Where does it hurt you, dear? My stomach. <laughs> Just as I thought, Bert. No temperature. No, I knew she didn't have any temperature. Susan, while I was hanging up my clothes, did you get into the cookie jar? Uh, I'm afraid I did. Susan. I ate all the cookies in the jar. I hit the jackpot. Well, Susan, I'm afraid we're in the same boat. I just hit the jackpot, too. <laughs> Pause briefly from our story, The Angel of Clarksville, starring Ruth Warwick, to bring you an important message. Veterans, how'd you like to be a member of America's Guard of Honor, the 82nd Airborne Division? Well, listen to this. You can enlist directly for the 82nd or for seven other Army outfits, all now stationed in this country. Here are the requirements. You must have served outside continental United States after September 1st, 1945. And this goes for ex-service men of all branches. If you qualify, you may enlist for any one of these eight organizations. Besides the 82nd, you can choose the 2nd, the 4th, 5th, or 9th Infantry Divisions, or the 2nd and 3rd Armored, or the 2nd Engineer Special Brigade. And get this, good soldiers will be guaranteed at least three years with the outfit you have chosen. Many of you will be able to re-enlist in the non-commissioned ranks up through sergeant. How about it, veterans? Get the details for yourself. Check with your local Army recruiting office right away. And now, Act Two of The Angel of Clarksville, starring Ruth Warwick as Nellie Johnson. 
with her husband facing prison as a result of having gambled and lost $2,000 of the bank's money, and with but 24 hours to replace it before the bank audit is made, Nellie frantically searches for a way out of the dilemma. Frantically is the word. I'd faced many things before, but nothing quite so serious as this. How to raise $2,000 in cash. I was in the midst of trying to find a solution when Uncle Bert came over to tell me about Susan. I just dropped in to report on the patient. Susan's feeling much better. Well, I'm glad to hear that. She probably won't be over bothering you for cookies for a while. Well, I'll have to dig up something else for Susan. You know, Bert, we almost feel that Susan belongs partly to us. Well, isn't that nice? I wanted to thank you for all you've done, Nellie. But I've never really had the chance. You see, for some time now, Susan has had neither mother nor father. I've often wondered about that. So you can understand how grateful I am to you. And I knew you'd want to know the crisis is past. <laughs> <laughs> well, but I'm glad that one is. Fred came home that evening. The audit was scheduled for the next morning. Fred was completely unstrung. And for the first time in my life, I felt I didn't know which way to turn. What are we going to do, Nellie? I don't know what we're going to do. Oh, Nellie, how could I ever bring this down upon you? Don't ask me that now. I'm trying to think. Fred. Fred, what is the name of the place over in Chase City where you lost the money? The Club Marino. Where's my hat? Oh, right here. Where are you going? I'm going over to talk to them. It's a chance. Keep a good thought for me. I drove over to Chase City faster than I'd ever driven before. I entered the Club Marino and asked for the manager. I was ushered into a room to face a heavy-set man behind a huge mahogany desk. Are you the manager? No, lady, I'm not. Mr. Duane is not in. Oh. Well, perhaps you can help me. Perhaps. My name is Nellie Johnson. My husband lost a considerable sum of money here. Well, that happens every day, Mrs. Johnson. But the money my husband lost didn't belong to him. Unless he can replace it by tomorrow morning, he faces prison. Uh, how much was it? $2,000. Well, that's a lot of money. And I'm very sorry, but I don't know what I can do for but you. But I thought perhaps I, I might be able to borrow it. This ain't a bank, lady. I'm sorry. Uh, of course. Well, thank you. Who was that, Phil? Ah, uh, some dame by the name of Nellie Johnson. Trying to borrow the 2,000 bucks her husband dropped here. Why did she come here? Evidently, the dough didn't belong to her husband. What did you say her name was? Nellie Johnson. Call my car right away. Well, Nellie? No luck. It was a long shot. Uh, I knew it would never happen. Something's up already. What do you mean? Mr. Victory at the bank just called. He wants me to come over to his home. Mr. Victory? He's found out that $2,000 is missing. Oh, no. But he doesn't suspect me. He's asking me for advice on the other boys in the bank. Oh, you've got to stall him, Fred. I know. But when the bank opens tomorrow morning and they check my accounts, I'm through. That still leaves tonight, Fred. I, uh, I better get over to Victory's. Yes, I'll go with you. No. No, Nellie, I'll walk over alone. It isn't far. I'll call you. Fred was gone. And for some reason, it seemed that everything left with him as he walked out. I felt so many things. Love, disappointment, pity. How could I help him? I was sitting there alone when the screen door opened. Anybody home? I, oh, go. Come in, Bert. Susan. Hello, Nellie. Hello, Susan Nellie. and I were out for a walk. She just wanted to say good night to you. Good night, Nellie. Good night, my dear. You look tired, Nellie. I do. Yes. You've been worrying, haven't you? Yes, dear. I have. I promise you I won't get in your cookie jar ever again. Please don't worry anymore. <laughs> I wish that was all I had to worry about. What's this? What's this? My... Oh, 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 it's nothing, nothing. I'll put Susan to bed, then I'll be back, Nellie. <laughs> Fred, isn't it, Nellie? Uh, yes, Fred. 
He's in bad trouble. I saw it coming. Is he involved at the bank? Yes. Yes, he is. Bert, I've got to have $2,000 in cash by tomorrow morning. $2,000? Well, I I wish I could help you. Oh, I hated to ask you, but Bert, Fred isn't bad. Not really bad. No one is, Nellie. He's just made a mistake. He's wanted so many things, Bert, for me. Ever since I first knew him, he was like that. I know, Nellie. I used to dream all his dreams with him. I used to make myself believe that everything he wanted, he would have. I used to pray for that. You've been too good to him, Nellie. Oh, how can you say that? I'm sorry. But someday you'll realize, Nellie, you can't live Fred's life for him, no matter how you try. First left. For the first time since I married Fred, I had a feeling Bert was right. Perhaps it was true. Whatever Fred did, he should be held responsible. I was waiting for Fred to return from Mr. Vickery's house when there was a knock on the door. Well? Are you Nellie Johnson? Yes. I'm Tony Delane. I run the Club Marino. Oh, oh, oh yes, Mr. Delane. Come in, please. Thank you. You were down at the club earlier this evening, weren't you? Yes. I'm sorry I just missed you. Mr. Johnson, I have something here for you. For me? In this envelope. I think it will help you out of your difficulties. Oh, oh Mr. DeLay. I know you wouldn't accept it any other way. I'm making it in the form of a loan. Pay me when you catch me. Oh, Mr. DeLane, how can I ever thank you for your generosity? I'm the one who should do the thanking here, Mrs. Johnson. You see, I'm repaying a very large debt to you. To me? I don't understand. You will when I tell you this. The little girl next door, Suzanne, is my niece. Your niece? Yes, my sister's child. My sister was a widow, and when she passed away, I did everything I could to try to help the child. But the other side of Suzanne's family wouldn't accept my help. Oh, I'm very sorry. I very rarely see or talk to Susan's Uncle Fred, but each time I do... Has told me how wonderful you have been to Suzanne. Oh, you're very kind. I'm very grateful to you. And I hope to see you again soon. You most certainly will, Mr. Delane. You know, I've never been called a diplomat, but, well, Uncle Bert's a very good friend of mine, and perhaps I can get him to know you better. You work on that. I certainly will. Good night, Mrs. Johnson. Good night. I tried to call Fred at Mr. Vickery's, but the line was busy, so I jumped in a car and hurried over to the Vickery house. When I arrived at the house, I ran up to the door. Hello, Mr. Vickery. It's Fred. Oh, uh, Mrs. Johnson, I tried to call you. Oh? I'm very sorry for you, Nellie. Oh, oh no, Mr. Vickery. Well, what could I do? Fred confessed everything to me. I, I had to turn him over to the police. <laughs> I didn't wait to explain, to argue, to do anything. I rushed down to the police station. They had me wait in the room for Fred to enter. Oh, darling. Nellie. Fred, I have the money. I have the $2,000. You do? But how, Nellie? Oh, don't ask me now. But, Fred, why did you tell Mr. Vickery? Why didn't you wait? Oh, it's too late now. Fred, we were bound to lick it. It's just as well, Nellie. How could you talk like that? You're so good. But... Oh, I'm glad it happened like this. But the papers will have it, dear. Everyone in town will know. Don't you realize, regardless of whether we return the money, they're bound to prosecute? I suppose so, but it's only right, Nellie. For the first time, I'm facing my own music. You don't know how good that makes me feel. Fred. I, I'm sorry it has to involve you. Oh, I'm not thinking of myself, Fred. Oh, you don't have to tell me that. Oh, darling, it'll work out. This is merely an incident in eternity. A wrong that had to be corrected this way. Oh, Nellie, you are an angel. You know, darling, my mother used to tell me that angels are really pure thoughts from God. So we'll hold only to good thoughts. And whatever happens, I'll always love you. And I'll always be waiting for you. Yes, my angel. Yes. <laughs> The 
curtain falls in the final act of the Angel of Clarks bill. Our star, Ruth Warwick, will return for a curtain call after this timely message from Wendell Niles. Look to the sky, young man. Yes, your future is in the air, and you can make the United States Air Force your career. If you have a high school education or the equivalent, you can choose the Air Force training that most appeals to you. For instance, you can choose photography or radio or communication or an aviation specialty such as control tower operation. And these are only a few of the more than 40 Air Force courses. If you really got the stuff, you can work yourself up to a well-paying position in the non-commissioned ranks. Or just as good, you can apply for aviation cadet pilot training. The aviation career plan is worth looking into, high school graduates. Why don't you talk it over at your nearest U.S. Air Force recruiting station? And don't put it off. Start your career in the Air Force right away. And now here again is our star, Ruth Warwick, and our producer. It's a genuine pleasure to welcome back to the microphone our star, Ruth Warwick, whose talent as an actress is rivaled only by her personal charm and loveliness. Ruth, we thank you. Why, thank you. It was fun, C.P. Now that you've finished Daisy Kenyon, what's occupying your time these days? Well, C.P., I'm pursuing an old ambition of mine. You are? What's that, Ruth? I'm, uh... Singing. Well, Ruth, why didn't we know? We'd have made this a musical. <laughs> oh, why not? Well, when did all this begin? Oh, a long time ago. I believe I was about five years old when I saw my first show. It happened to be Blossom Time, and I got the urge. That was the beginning, then? Mm-hmm. As a matter of fact, I started out professionally as a singer, but being a perfectionist, I guess I expected too much of myself. I kind of let it slide. You know, I felt the same way about my golf game many times. <laughs> <laughs> but, Ruth... What are you doing with your singing? Oh, well, right now I'm making the personal album show for servicemen in hospitals and overseas. That's very fine, Ruth. Well, we'll all be listening for you in a new role. And we know the great accord which you've already received as a dramatic actress will be yours in your new role as a singer. Again, Ruth, thanks for an inspired performance here on Proudly We Hail. Well, I assure you, C.P., Army recruiting is the most worthwhile sponsor one could appear for. But now, before I leave... What's your playbill going to be for next week? We have a delightful comedy on tap for next week called No Room for Divorce. And our star will be that fine actress of motion pictures, Helen Walker. Count me in, C.P. Now, goodbye. Goodbye, Ruth Warwick. (laughs) Goodbye. (laughs) And now, ladies and gentlemen, join us next week, won't you? When your theater of stars presents the gay comedy No Room for Divorce, starring Helen Walker. Until next week, this is C.P. McGregor saying thanks for listening and cheerio from Hollywood. Our thanks to the Hollywood Coordinating Committee, which arranges for the appearance of all stars on this program. Music was under the direction of Eddie Scrivani. Charlie We Hail is transcribed in Hollywood for release at this time. Wendell Niles speaking.